Sawate Discipoli and Sawate Omnes. Welcome again. Doing something way different where I'm taking some legal terms. We're going to actually expound on those and how they translate from Latin literally into the English. Um, and really exp explaining as to what they really mean because they actually just mean what they mean. So, if you're curious, I've done things like this before on my longer form, aka my podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Casts, wherever you get your podcast, you can find your boy. And I lay down a lot of knowledge, and I like laying down knowledge, and I like laying down knowledge for people that appreciate the knowledge. So let's get on into it, and show some support if you can. Would love it. Would appreciate it. I don't ask for anything from you guys. I really do this. I get to the end of my day. I'm in my planning period after having taught all day long. There's a way you guys can support me a little bit in some way, shape, or form. You guys see me. Put in the reps. Do you put in the reps? Put in the reps. See what happens. Be consistent. Show up for yourself. Show up for the people around you. Show up for your passions in life. And continue on no matter what. Because you guys know me. And if you don't know me, you know that I've been doing this for about three years now on TikTok. And I just got viral, viral of this virality thing a couple months ago. I don't really care about the virality unless it brings more people in that want to appreciate my content. So let's get on into it. Let's learn something. And let's get in there. I don't know. Ad nauseum. Something that I tend to do a lot with my rambled ambles. Ad is a preposition in Latin. There are two types of prepositions. They're dynamic and or static. Dynamic pertains to accusative prepositions, a.k.a. objects that are pertaining towards a direct object versus prepositions that are static. Go to the ablative case. Ablative refers to the object of the preposition or the prepositional phrase, but more so location-wise. So we have five cases that I've gone over before. We have nominative, accusative, genitive. I'm sorry. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. There you go. It's long. It's been a long day, as most days are. And it's not even done. But two or towards is an accusative preposition, which would mean that nausea would need to take an ending of am in order to indicate that it was also accusative singular so that they could go together in this prepositional phrase. Therefore, ad nauseum means towards or to nausea, and that's really what it means. It just mean, means that you're belaboring something, something to the point where it's to nausea. Shut your face. Sometimes my ramble bambles are ad nauseum. Mea culpa, mea culpa. You guys have heard people say this before in the past with those A endings. It's just being nominative singular, a.k.a. the subject of a sentence, a.k.a. you're the subject of your life. Be the main character in your life and be the main character of your video game because I see too many people acting like they're NPCs in their own video game. And they just walk into a wall, and then they continue to walk. Like a lot of my students who don't need to seem to not understand how to actually just follow along with everybody else around them. And oddly enough, I have to call them out and show them that I don't understand why they're the only people that don't have anything on their desk, even though we're all following along on this that I'm doing for the the, the past 35 minutes in class, as you can see. This comes from a little bit of a tender place. And yet this person is just sitting there like a box of rocks, chilling and skipping a bop and like an NPC, not even, I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, and then they know exactly. It's just like, why do I have to get there? Why do I have to get 40 minutes into a class to have to do that to somebody for them to realize that they know that they're not doing something that they should be as a high school student. <sighs> My fault. My blame. Skip it a bit of a Culpa means blame. It actually means fault, but we, we say my fault, my blame. Same thing. Subpoena. In fact, in the Latin, it would be pronounced subpoena. Poena means penalty. 
sub is a type of preposition, but this one is sub as an under, like a submarine or a subway, subdermal, subversive, submissive. I'm done. Under, if it's an ablative preposition, then we're going I'm gonna need poena to take on an ablative, probably singular ending, because we're not talking about under penalties plural. So then that's why we have an A ending with a macron over it, AK under penalty or under the pen penalty. And what is this subpoena? It's just a writ order calling you to the court of law, right? Because you're not quite in trouble yet, but you're under penalty. You're under review for potentially being in trouble, you naughty, naughty individual. Ex post facto. I've never seen this before where there are two prepositions next to each other like that that are ablative, but you got to love it. X means out of. It's where we get exit. X means out of. IT means he, she, it goes. If you ever look at an exit sign at the top of a door, it means literally suffixed out from it to X. He, she, it goes out of. So next time you see an exit sign, that's literally what it means, and it comes from the Latin. Post, however, is not from the postmaster general. It's not from the post office. No, no, no. It's from post, the Latin preposition, with the ablative essence, static in nature. That would mean post, well, really just kind of reiterates the out of, which is interesting. Facto, however, means fact. So facto again with this O ending, indicating that it is ablative singular. But in this case, we have A ending for something that is feminine. And then we have O for masculine and or neuter in the second declension. And then finally, our last one here that I actually did not put the translation of is de facto, because we know that facto is already an ablative singular noun, which refers to the fact but DE, again, is an ablative preposition. But what does it mean in this case? So where we get things like deport, um, demotivate, depressed. It's translated as in fact. I would more say that would be in facto. De facto would translate more so as about the fact. Or down from the fact. Essentially after the fact. So, if you didn't know, now you know. There are some terms that you might well, very well see if you ever called the jury duty or something like that, or maybe you are convicted in the court of law, in which case you violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Vietha! The possessed a scannery.